What's going on, people? I had said that I wasn't going to do any more eBay videos because I don't sell on eBay. And my recommendation, starting a few months ago, was for my people to not sell on eBay. That's my recommendation. And if you must sell on eBay, you must have a high starting price point, in my opinion, because of the high hassle factor of eBay. Now, with all things being equal, and me being fully honest with you, <clears throat> in 2013, you could still make a shitload of money on eBay if you're willing to deal with the bullshit. You can't. The money's there. I'm not going to say you can't make money. I'm just going to say it's like picking a rose with a hundred thorns on it. If you're really slick, you have the right equipment mentally and physically, and you can deal with certain things, you can pick those roses all day long. For me and for people that I am bringing to my groups, people that I'm bringing to my training, I'm highly recommending getting rid of eBay. That's my recommendation. But with that, for those of you who want to deal with eBay, who feel that it's worth it, I'm going to give you some of my thoughts and insights based on at one point being the person who used to love eBay, someone that was a power seller when it, when, when, when it was power seller, I forget what it is now, on four different accounts, I have seen things that happen. Let's go back to the summer when they just started getting rid of people. eBay has a plan and there's a guy in one of my groups, James Carpenter, he says something that I thought but I never articulated and I think he's 100% right. I think that eBay is going to make you do free returns and free shipping one day soon on their site. It's coming. And it's not just going to be per category. It's going to be on everything. It's coming. And the reason it's coming is because Amazon. Once again, he's, uh, he referenced something I said in a video. Why Amazon is kicking eBay's ass is trust. I watched it. This watch I bought on eBay for 50 bucks. I could sell it on Amazon for $350. That's a, that was a tip to you, to those of you who were paying attention. So just to give you some more information to help you make a better decision on what you are going to do if you're a business, if you're a reseller. This is what I see as the future eBay seller. I see very high volume, very low margin, which can happen on Amazon also. I see very unique, odd, and <clears throat> specialized items, one-offs, but extremely high margins because they're very unique. I think the collectible, the unique, the odd, the very niche that spot in eBay is going to be wide open and you can make a lot of money there. I'll like give you an example of something you never thought about. I bought a unit full of commercial freezers on, in the storage auction business. Brand new. Commercial freezers. People didn't know they were because they weren't assembled. And there was 25 of them in there complete with the walls, the doors, and the condensers and everything. Just had to put them together. Brand new. Never used. Still had a warranty. And I put them on eBay because since the way that they were situated, they were easy to ship. They were incredibly easy to ship. Those suckers lasted six months. I was selling two or three a month. It was, I mean, I'm extremely high margin. The unit cost me 500 bucks. I was selling the units for 2,500 to some people would say, hey, can I get two? And I would do that for four just to win, just to win all day long. So things like that, something you never thought about because everyone is kind of stuck on that wow factor item or you can make, and I have a video of here, you, you can make a lot of money on non-sexy stuff. Clothing, diapers, formula. I mean, seriously, there's a lot of stuff that you can sell that's not really sexy, but it's something that people need. And our business, when we were in the storage auction business, really took off when we focused on what people needed more so than what they wanted. Someone may consider a PlayStation a want. Someone may consider it a need. Someone, maybe 25 and under, a PlayStation, an Xbox, video game. Those are must-have. Those are 
those are like a household appliances. I mean, you know, when I go to certain friends' houses of a certain age group, I notice that everybody has these things. So it's a ubiquitous item that's seen as an appliance. You know, your cell phone used to be, a mobile, phone, mobile cell phone was a luxury at one point. Now it's become a necessity. So maybe in the future, some of these games, because of their multiple, multiple uses, multiple purposes, they may become necessities. But when you focus on what people need, it's going to be much better for your your P&L sheet. Now, another thing that's going to happen, because like I said, I fully agree the free shipping is coming. The free return is coming. You, to sell on their platform, they're going to require you to offer free returns. And I'm going to tell you who started this. And it's bit everyone in the ass, and that was Zappos. Zappos started it. It went from one site to another. And this is the thing. I am an Amazon. I buy... You know, I know some people are like, you buy stuff on eBay all the time because <laughs> you can get stuff dirt cheap on eBay because eBay is a great place to get stuff dirt cheap. I know that I am 100 percent protected. And no, I don't use a PayPal account. For those of you who want to shop on eBay and hate PayPal, this is how you do it. Find what you want. When you go check out, it go, takes you to the PayPal site and you just like psh, go down there, pay by credit card. And, and they always say, hey, you want to sign up with a PayPal account? I'm like, uh, no. That's how I do it. So if you have a credit card, you can buy all day, every day, every month, every year on eBay and never open up a PayPal account. That's how you do it. So with that, it's also a great place to source. So going back to the future, you're going to have two distinct sellers on eBay. Big box, mass market, volume, 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 because with the volume, you get efficiencies and you get the economies of scale. And the other guy, the niche guy, is going to have high margins to make dealing with all of that bullshit worth it. Because if you got to deal with eBay's policies, procedures, crazy buyers, but you're making a net of 10, 15, 20, 30,000, and that's net, not gross sales, but nets. Yeah, it's, at that point, it's like, yeah, I'm feeling pain, but... This lotion, this green lotion, these washing, you know, that wash, ooh, this, mm, yeah, that, uh, it's easing that pain. You know, it's like that money's like Ben Gay on your aching mental joints. So at that point, it becomes a toss up of, yeah, I'm making money and don't really want to deal with it, but it makes more sense because when you're going through that type of mental aggravation and you're making a hundred bucks a month or 200 bucks a month or, you have a good month and you sell five hundred dollars worth of stuff, and then the biggest item that you sold is two fifty, and the person has a problem and they lock up your money. <laughs> That's your profit for the month gone. That's high aggravation, low reward to me. So those are the two buyers that you're going to have on eBay in the future. In the future, I will project the next three years or sooner, because the big culling. If you ever watched Stargate Atlantis when the rafe came, a lot of people got raped. It was just like. Some people got temporary suspensions and other people got death because it just sucked the life out of them. You will, they, they're thinning out the platform because they're making, they're, they're trying to groom their customer base because you as a seller are eBay's customer and they're trying to get rid of problematic customers. And sometimes problematic customers aren't people who did the wrong thing. They're people who do not fit into their future business plans. So as uh, one of the comedians say, you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. So there are many people who really didn't do anything egregious, didn't really do anything crazy, but they found themselves rifted, which I told you in the you know, video, eBay and PayPal are rather snake in your business because from an entrepreneur standpoint, eBay is a company, it's their business, they can do what they want. That's their right. I'm not mad at that. That's that's the beauty of having your own business. You can dictate and create policy because it's your platform. My biggest problem with eBay is the way that they do this stuff. It's like, okay, let's ask some questions. Your face is still stinging? Wait a minute, your ears are still ringing from that bitch slap? Oh, well, we're not going to ask you any more questions because you're not responding. So <laughs> that stuff is, you know, even PayPal. They put out that they were going to change their draconian policies. I don't know if they have because I don't deal with them. But that's what's happening. 
that's what's going to happen. So if you are not ready, and let's talk about the free return labels, that's going to reduce your margins. It's going to reduce your margins. eBay is going to become a game that it is mandatory that you get your inventory at ridiculously cheap to compete. You will have to get it so cheap that if you don't, any hiccup, any delay in the distribution of your funds will put your business in jeopardy. It's that tight. So if you're going to do eBay, become very specialized. Years ago, I cannot remember his name. This is when the Invicta watches were really, really hot. They still sell well, but there was a point they were white hot. And there was this guy, uh, Eddie O, who was up in Massachusetts. Because this is another thing. When you're on eBay, find sellers that are doing things that you like and model them. And I watched this guy because he was, all his pictures were taken outside, which made the watches just pop. So I followed him and I looked at him and I started you know, figuring out how to get Invictus. And I had a source in Florida at one point and then placed out in, that, in the apparel mart here in Atlanta, got started buying Invictus. So I, I was able to, it was so cool that I was able to go down there and buy one watch at a time. So for about four months, I was selling inventory I didn't have. I put a watch up there, like I would list like 150 watches because I knew I can go down there and get most of them and he could get them from his source within two days. So I had a situation where a guy bought a dragon. I didn't have it, and my guy didn't have it. So I talked to my guy, and this is like drop shipping. And it, it worked out beautifully because his guy was in California, and the customer was in California. So he talked to his guy, and he said, hey, don't ship it to me, ship it here. I kicked the guy an extra 10 bucks for shipping, you know, just for the hassle factor. And you know, the guy did it, and the guy got his watch even faster. So I was real big proponent on selling stuff like that without actually buying it because it allowed me to list a lot more stuff and I didn't have to spend any money until an item was sold. That was something I did on several different items and a lot of people don't talk about that because if you can get an item or say you live in a town like uh, say you live in Austin, Texas, right? One of my favorite furniture distributors is Four Hands. Their operations and warehouse are right there in town. And for those of you in Austin, Texas, they'll go to Craigslist, they often have clearance and you get some badass furniture. So you live in that town and you know their headquarters there. Go ahead and get yourself a business license because they're not gonna sell to you without a business license. And you know, you're gonna have to have a storefront to get in there, but if you already have this stuff, it'll be real easy. And you can go in there in their clearance section and rack up you could seriously rack up. You know, you could put some stuff up on eBay or put some stuff up on Craigslist. Because I would do it right now, but the warehouse isn't here and I have to have it shipped to me and I have to pay for it first. You can just go to the warehouse and just see what they have that day, list that stuff on Craigslist that day. Now understand, <laughs> you know, with Craigslist, if they, you don't have it, you're not gonna suffer penalties, but if they don't have it on eBay, you're gonna catch hell. And, you know, something like that, something like you may live, um, like say Smyrna, Georgia, uh, that's where they make Glocks. You know, you may not be able to sell the guns, but you can sell gun parts. You know, just start thinking of if you live somewhere where there's a distributing warehouse of a certain product that you like, know about, and can sell, you create a very efficient logistical supply chain. Because if you can have it on hold, and I had another company that sold modern furniture, and they would let me reserve stuff for 30 days. I would like lock up all kinds of stuff and sell it and then go get it. So that is the evolution of my business model of being able to sell stuff and not have inventory because, you know, when I first started here on YouTube and, you know, people didn't know how create space were, people thought I had like hundreds of books in my basement. No, I didn't. I never had an inventory of more than 20 or 15 books at any one time. And then when I got a little smarter and figured out how I could just drop ship it, I had no inventory. So, you know, sometimes people want to sign books. But that is the way I did it because inventory cost, warehousing, that stuff can break you if you don't do it right. And with, you know, going to publishing, you don't know if the book's going to sell. 
it doesn't matter how brilliant the book is written. If certain books just don't sell because the subject matter doesn't appeal to a lot of people. And that's it. It's not a mean thing. Either. It's just the way it is. So I've been working on this inventory thing for years. So if you're going to do eBay in the future, you're going to have to be much smarter than the average bear. Or you won't be there because they're going to get rid of you. Uh, there's a similar program in the military. If you're an officer or an NCL, non-commissioned officer, after so many years in the military, if you don't, if you're not where they think you should be in terms of promotion, they will rift you. And rifting is reduction in force. I used to work in the medical side, and a lot of people got rifted out, and we would do their medical discharge paperwork. I would see people 16 and a half years, 17. Like if you got 17 and a half years, you locked in, and you were going to retire into your 20. I saw so many people rifted at 15 years, 16 years. So that's what eBay is going to start doing. You, I don't care if you've been on there since day one. If you do not fit their profile of where you should be as a seller, they're going to get rid of you. It's not a hate thing. It's not like you did a lot of stuff really wrong. And that's the future of eBay. That's what's going to happen. If you do not fit that eBay profile that they've worked on at some MBA up there in corporate was like, well, this is what we want our future eBay seller to look like. If you're not fitting that, red flag on the play, ejection. <laughs> you're gone. And I'm telling people this not to be an asshole, not to say, hey, you know, I told you so. I am giving you warning. How many times when I put up these eBay videos was I wrong? Not one. So just like James said, just like I thought before he said it, this is coming to be. Now, if you want to play that game, you're going to need what I call is uh, what I call a capital credit card, operating capital credit card. You're going to need a credit card with like fifteen hundred, five thousand on it that you're going to use exclusively for shipping stuff and running your eBay business where you don't need to get the eBay money because 21 day holds all this. That's going to be the norm. It's going to be all about eBay's other customer, which is the people that buy your stuff. See, this is how it goes. You as a seller, are eBay's customer, and the people that come to the platform to buy from the various customers of eBay are also eBay's customers. They're not your customers. <laughs> and that's where many people make a mistake. They're not your customer. And eBay and Amazon both do things to make it really incredibly hard for you to contact that buyer you know putting certain things in the box that says hey you know thanks for buying this thing for me on amazon go to my website that's forbidden that's that's forbidden you can't you're not supposed you can do it and you may get away with it until someone reports you and then at that point whoosh, off with your head so understand the game i've said that in my book they're you they're ebay's customers there's they're amazon's customers and just, you know, imparting, don't hate the player, don't hate the game, learn the fucking rules so you can win. All right, this is Glendon Cameron, and I will see you on the good side.